Welcome to the Monty Collier Report. I'm Monty Collier. If you'd like to get a copy of my theological journal, send me an email with your name and address and I'll mail one out to you free of charge. The teachings of Roman Catholicism are condemned by Holy Scripture. In fact, one looks in vain to find the dogmas of Roman Catholicism in the pages of the Bible. Consider the Catholic Church's blasphemous teachings concerning the Virgin Mary. The Bible never says Mary was preserved free from all stain of original sin at her conception, yet this is the official teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. There is no verse in Scripture that explicitly states or even infers that Mary was born without original sin. Nevertheless, this myth of the Catholic Church, this teaching found nowhere in Scripture, has been presented to the world as one of the basic truths of Roman Catholicism. Amazingly, this mythical teaching, the Immaculate Conception, was rejected by the Catholic Church's chief theologian, Thomas Aquinas, who was thought to be so important that his Summa Theologica was placed upon the altar next to the Bible at the Council of Trent in the 16th century. Let's take a moment and discuss Aquinas and his rejection of the Immaculate Conception. Pope Leo XIII, in his August 4, 1879 encyclical titled Attorney Patris, which in English reads, Of the Eternal Father, referred to Thomas Aquinas as the angelic doctor. In that encyclical, Leo XIII said that Aquinas was the chief and master of all towers, and that his teachings should be taught by the clergy. So why did Thomas Aquinas reject the claim that Mary was born free from original sin? because he believed Mary had to be redeemed from her sin by Christ. Of course, this implies that Mary was a sinner. Thomas Aquinas writes, I quote, She, Mary, had indeed to be conceived with original sin, inasmuch as her conception resulted from the commingling of both sexes. For the privilege of, con of conceiving without impairment of virginity was reserved exclusively to her who as a virgin conceived the Son of God. But the commingling of the sexes which, after the sin of our first parent, cannot take place without lust, transmits original sin to the offspring. Likewise, if Mary had been conceived without original sin, she would not have had to be redeemed by Christ. And so Christ would not be the universal redeemer of men which detracts from his dignity. Accordingly, we must hold that she was conceived with original sin. Aquinas' Shorter Summa, section 224, page 279, Sophia Institute Press, 2002. So the angelic doctor, Thomas Aquinas, clearly rejects the immaculate conception. One can also see some errors that Thomas Aquinas was teaching back then that are still held today in the Catholic Church. For example, the mistake that sex within the bounds of marriage is sinful and the heresy that Christ is a universal Savior. The Bible teaches that Christ is a particular Savior, that is, Christ died only for the elect. Another interesting thing to note about Aquinas' rejection of the Immaculate Conception is that, despite the angelic doctor's rejection of this myth, Pope Pius IX officially instituted the Immaculate Conception as official dogma in 1854 when Pope Leo XIII officially glorified Aquinas' teaching as a definitive exposition of Catholicism some 25 years later, then it became all too clear that the Vatican was contradicting itself concerning this mythical Marian dogma. The resulting logical embarrassment has haunted the so-called infallible Catholic Church ever since. The Bible refutes the notion that Mary was born without sin when we read in the Gospel of the angel's first visit to her, the Bible says, And the angel came in unto her, and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Luke chapter 1 verses 28 through 30. That Mary was a sinner is easily deduced from this passage of Scripture. First, Mary is troubled and afraid at what the angel had spoken to her. She knew that as a sinner she was unworthy of such a task. The angel, knowing her fear, comforts her by telling her that God has decided to be gracious unto her. The angel says, Fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. Our sinful nature makes us to fear when we come into the holy presence of God. Consider Isaiah. Isaiah exclaimed, quote, Woe is me, 
for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. Isaiah had come into the presence of God in his holiness, and he was afraid, just like Mary. Consider the Apostle John's reactions when he was confronted with the presence of Christ. We read, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. Notice that Christ told John, to not be afraid, just as Mary was told not to fear. Many examples could be multiplied, but this is the common reaction of a sinner when confronted by our holy God. Another indication that Mary was conceived without sin, not free from original sin, is her discussion with Elizabeth. The Bible says that Mary spoke of her need of a Savior. We read, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 48. Mary here refers to God as her personal Savior. And like all people who have been regenerated by the Holy Ghost and justified by faith alone, Mary rejoices in the Lord our Savior. She confesses, My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. So again, not only do we see Mary behave as any sinner would when confronted with the holiness of God, we also see her behave like all people who are aware of their justification before God. Another indication that Mary was not born without a sinful nature is easily seen in John chapter 2. Mary here tries to use her parental authority to force Jesus to intervene at the wedding at Cana. Before our Lord works his first miracle, however, he first takes a moment and publicly rebukes the sin of his mother. He lets her know in front of everyone that it is God who commands us, and not we him. We read, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. And Jesus say unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. John chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Notice that Jesus does not call her mother, but he calls her woman. The fact that Mary was his earthly mother gives her no special office or position. Like all sinners saved by grace, Mary was in need of correction. The Lord dealt with Mary here as he dealt with the woman at the well, who equally needed correction and instruction. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, you worship, you know not what. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verses 21 through 24. Mary was not allowed to interfere with Christ's ministry. The Bible says, There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35. Not only did Christ not stop teaching at his mother's request, but he used the opportunity to show that any Christian is as good as his mother. So we have learned that Mary was in fact born with original sin. She had a sinful nature and she had a need for a savior. And the Lord justified her just as he justifies all of his elect by the imputed righteousness of Christ alone. Well, I'd like to thank you for listening to the Monte Carlo Report. If you're interested in other videos on Calvinism, you can visit my channel page and watch as many as you want. Thanks a lot, guys.